The Holocaust, a global tragedy. The only thing necessary for the triumph of evil is for good people to do nothing. Adolf Hitler, a charismatic Austrian born man, rose into power in Germany during the 1920s and early 1930s at a time of social, political, and economic upheaval. Once in power, he took all opposition and launched an ambitious elimination of the Jewish people. His domination barely lasted 12 years. He died a broken and defeated man. Dr. Joseph Mingle, Angel of Death. Dr. Joseph Mingola did the horrifying experiments on twins and other targeted groups during the Holocaust. Only some 200 children from the 1,500 sets of twins and triplets used in the medical experiments in Auschwitz survived. Dr. Mingola injected blue dye into the eyes of blonde twins and switched to their organs. All twins received five injections every day. Dr. Mingola also would sew the twins together to make them Siamese twins. If one of the twins died, Dr. Mingla would stick a fatal injection into the heart of the surviving twin to do studies on their body. Eva Moses Kaur was born in Port Transylvania in 1935. She was deported with her family in early 1944 to Auschwitz. Her parents and two older sisters died in Auschwitz. Eva and her twin sister Miriam survived. After she was free from Auschwitz, Eva lived for five years under communistic Romania with an aunt who survived the war. In 1950, she was drafted into the Israeli army, reaching the rank of Sergeant Major. In 1984, Eva founded the Candles Museum, an organization for the Mingala twins dedicated to finding their medical records. In 1985, she led a memorial to the return of many twins to Auschwitz. She married an American, also a survivor, and moved with him to Terre Haute, Indiana. They had two children. Eva Moses Kors still lives with the haunting memories of the Holocaust, but she still has forgiven Hitler, Dr. Mengele, and the Nazis for all the things they have done. As soon as we arrived in Auschwitz, we stepped down from the cattle car. My mother grabbed my twin sister and me by the hand. Everything was moving very fast. Within 10 minutes after we stepped down from the cattle car, I looked around in my childish curiosity to try to figure out what the place was. When I realized that my father and two older sisters had disappeared in the crowd, I never saw them again. As we were holding on to my mother, an SS was running toward us, yelling in German, twins, twins. We did not volunteer any information. He approached us and demanded to know if we were twins, and my mother very hesitantly asked if that was good, and the SS said yes, and my mother said yes. At that moment, another SS came, pulled my mother in one direction, we were pulled in the opposite direction. We were crying, she was crying. Nobody explained anything. I remember looking back, and seeing my mother's arms stretched out in despair as they were pulled away. I never got to say goodbye to her, because this was the last time we saw her. And we had a German woman, you know, a Nazi woman. She was an SS woman. She came and looked at me, and she said, showed me, and she said, here, look what you did, and I said, well, the machine, the, the thing is broken. She said, why didn't you tell the mechanic to fix it? I said, I told him. He was busy. She said, she closed her fist and just hit me and broke three, three front teeth. My bleeding didn't start for days. As I was tossing and turning, I noticed something big and dark moving on the floor. I began counting one, two, three, four, five. By the time I got to five, I jumped up screaming, mice. I was always scared of mice because I was, grew up in a farm and I encountered them often there. A voice from the top bunk bed yelled at me, you stupid kids, these are not mice, they are rats and you better get used to them because they are everywhere. Miriam and I, could not even go back to the bed. So we went to the latrine. 
As I enter the place, there on the filthy floor were the scattered corpses of three children. Their bodies were naked and shriveled. And then, as a ten-year-old, I realized that that can happen to my twin sister and me also, unless I did something to prevent it. So I made a silent pledge that I will do whatever is within my power to make sure that Miriam and I shall not end up on that filthy latrine floor. And they said, you better look at this. They made up, you know. She was standing there, and she got shot. I was in the concentration camp because I said, never Hitler, I may be the only person of billions of people, even Swiss people, even Italians, even Americans, said hi Hitler, but not me. And the soup? Mm -mm. They once gave me a soup and there was a, like a total piece of meat. And the German, and I asked, I looked at it and I asked, what is this? He said, maybe your sister or your brother, a piece of him. Yeah, I started crying and I couldn't stop. A Gestapo man got fresh with me and embraced me and I hit him very badly in the stomach. I was very strong and he got a knife out and put the knife in my side. There was hell on earth, that was it. The Jews were sent into the gas chambers after being undressed. The rooms had shower insulations and water pipes so that it looked like a shower room. The women and children were gassed first, and then the men followed. Zyklon B, a very fatal and effective gas, was used to gas the prisoners. A member of the SS climbed on the roof. The people went on crying for about 10 minutes. Then the prisoners opened the doors. Everything was in disorder and contorted. He was given off. The bodies were loaded on a rough wagon and taken to a ditch. The next batch was already undressing in the huts. After that, I didn't look at my wife for four weeks. From the testimonies of SS Private Boeck. The crematoriums. When the pits where the Nazis burned innocent victims were overflowing, the Nazis came up with a plan to use crematoriums to burn people faster. The people in the gas chambers were loaded up and taken to the crematoriums. They were thrown in the oven and incinerated. Some people were also burned alive. According to the calculations by the German authorities, 340 corpses could be burned every 24 hours. When the Nazis heard that the American soldiers were coming, they blew up the crematoria and to try to hide all the evidence of what they were doing. We hope we have exposed the tragic events of the Holocaust. At the time, many people thought that this horrible event could not have happened. We would like to thank our interview guests, Lola and Jacob Goldberg, Eva Moses Kaur, and Herb Gard Vukana for sharing their experiences. My thought was that they never could win, even if it seemed they would on the end always lose because bad people always lose.